He was always interested in everything. He loved to solve problems. And of course, he did that with sculpture. He came here in 1963 from Australia. He was born in Melbourne and he knew that New York was the center of the art world and he wanted to be where the center was. When the piece was chosen by Eurus to be in front of Eurus Hall, he was very, very pleased. And he designed Curl specifically for Eurus Hall, which at that time didn't have the front that was added later. It had a very large plaza and it had two fountains on either side. And the sculpture really prospectively worked so well there. He had great spatial abilities, as I think many sculptors have. Clem was very concerned about having the work relate to its environment, its architectural environment, but also the individual viewer. The forms themselves turn, and they lead your eye around, they sort of draw your body around. I think sculpture really lagged behind painting in terms of abstraction and in terms, in some ways, of modernism. I mean, you can immediately think of the painters of the 50s and 60s who were really taking painting in such new directions. And I think in the 60s and 70s, you really saw people like Clement Meadmore who were really trying to make sculpture much more dynamic than it had been. The things I think that you see with Curl is the sense of volume, but it was never heavy. You look at his pieces, they look light, they look almost as if they're going to take off from the ground. And he always had this elegance and this sense of movement. It engages your eye, and in the process of walking around it, looking at it, it instills feelings and emotions of movement, of even joy, of passage through space, of the transformation of a single form through various stages. He made small models out of polyurethane and he had elements and the elements had a 22 and a half inch degree turn and he would work with these elements. He could use three, six, eight, ten and put them together and he would look and see how they balance. From the model, the crew would make exact drawings of each element of the model, and then those could be enlarged. Oftentimes, just with an opaque projector or something on the wall, they would make all these decisions, and then they would build the large-scale piece. And typically, an artist would visit three or four times during the fabrication process so they could look at the work when it was actually at its size, because oftentimes they would need to make adjustments along the way. He always went to all the installations. Often, they would have to lift a sculpture with a crane and he would know the exact place that the hook could be placed to lift the whole sculpture. These sculptures were all built out of Corten steel, which was a new product for U.S. steel in the mid-60s. It had been used industrially for years, but they were trying to promote its use in art and architecture. Corten steel became very popular for sculptors because it rusted naturally but Clem decided that he really preferred that his sculptures be black and the way they looked against a building or against a background. It gets you out of yourself and into a different realm. And I think this is the great power of Clem's work. It's why good public art is so important because it enhances the environment and it enhances the lives of the people who see it. Whenever somebody was interested in a large monumental piece and came to see Clem in New York, he would take them up to see Curl. I know he went to see it a few months before he died in 2005. He was really very proud of that piece.